G'day guys, it's Tom here with MYT Solar. Today this video is going to be about Starlink and what we're doing for our customers to power this bad boy off grid. A little bit of an overview about the Starlink Mini, what's going to come with it when you open it, and then the solution that we used on this 19 MKS as a really good way to run this thing off grid. Don't forget to subscribe to MYT Solar down below so you can see more videos like this. Let's go. Alrighty, so in the box, what you're gonna, obviously gonna have the, the Mini itself. The kind of typical way to power the Mini when it comes from the box and what they're kind of expecting is using a 120 volt plug. Now, obviously most of our customers are gonna have an inverter. So running a 20, 120 volt plug would work. However, the Mini itself doesn't run on 120 volt. This has actually got a step down transformer essentially in it. So it's taking 120 volt and turning it into 30 volts. The Mini actually can run on 12 volts DC up to about 24 volts DC, maybe a little higher than that. For us, we're obviously thinking about 12 and 24. So this is the power cable that is designed to power the Mini. It's a 50 foot cable, 10 meters or so. And you can see it's got these, it's got this barrel type DC jack. You know, you're plugging this barrel type DC jack into the 120 volt thing, and then this is gonna be powering the mini. Essentially, this is gonna be DC. This is gonna be 12 volts, 24 volts. This is probably gonna make it 24 volts because one of the problems is, is with this long cable, there's gonna be voltage drop in the line. Starting off at the power brick at say a high voltage, 30 volts, by the time it reaches the mini, it's still gonna be a high enough voltage to power the mini. Obviously, the other thing here it comes with is just a way to mount the mini. We are gonna have another video coming out soon about how we're gonna mount our mini to the RV as kind of an ideal solution with a third party mount. So this 120 volt converter really is converting 120 volt AC to the 30 volts DC that the Starlink needs. And the reason it really needs 30 volts is because this cable that plugs into the Starlink, it's I believe about 50 feet long. And you can see how small it is. Inside of here are two, probably two wires, a power and a ground. And it's traveling over 50 feet with very, very small wiring. So there's gonna be some voltage drop, especially once that mini creates a load. So over that long distance, the 30 volts that starts at the power brick right here is going to lower and lower and lower, but stay high enough to run the mini. Let's, let's look at that right now. We plug in the mini here to this 120 volt source. So this would be typical of someone who was maybe running the mini off of an inverter or just running the mini uh, typical to, to when you actually get the mini and you're just running it um, using the power brick. If we look right here on the meter we can see that it's 29.9 volts. Once that mini is running, if this cord was plugged into the mini, that load would be there and that would drop off. I don't know exactly what it would be under load, but much lower due to that long cable and the load running through it. So let's go take a look at how we're gonna power this guy with this 19 MKS today. Alrighty, so obviously, like I mentioned, our systems all have a whole house inverter. Though. That means that these outlets are gonna always be working. And so we could just plug the Starlink like they intended straight from that power brick. But if we think about the power conversion, then we're going from our battery bank which is DC to our inverter which is AC we're plugging in the Starlink AC converter going to DC to run the Starlink so there's some inefficiencies there so we want to try to run the Starlink directly off of DC so with just the cord and we forgo the power brick we want to get this in some DC juice so like I said the Starlink can do 12 volts DC, but it needs exactly 12 volts DC or a little more. And what can happen when people try to run it off 12 volt in their normal RV with say their lead acid batteries, like I talked about, you get that massive voltage drop. And this time they're not starting out at 30 volts and decreasing under load. They're starting at 12 volts and decreasing under load, which is enough to make this thing kind of turn off and reset and not really love it. Luckily for us, if you've been watching a lot of our videos, you'll know that most of our battery banks are a 24 volt battery bank. So that's very very, very helpful to try to run this thing directly. So in this 19 MKS, we've got two Victron 24 volt 200 amp hour batteries. As I mentioned, we've got the inverter and a big system right here, but we want to directly power from these 24 volt batteries. I'll show you how we wired that using something that was kind of pre-existing in the RV. We had to change a few things, change some fusing and change some cabling, but let's check that out outside. So this is the Call it a ZAMP port, if you will, on the outside of the Outdoors RV here. It's an SAE connector, which is a power and a ground wire. Now, typically this is connected to the 12 volt battery that's on the tongue. So for most people, this is a 12 volt source that they already have at the RV, which in some way or another could be used to power the Starlink Mini. But as I mentioned, there's that problem 
of the 12 volts not really being high enough voltage. One thing that I've noticed that a lot of people are doing and Thompson RV is doing this for people who only have a 12 volt battery bank is using a buck boost, a little 12 volt to 24 volt booster and building another port so that the Starlink could be powered from there. If you've watched a lot of our videos, you'll know that we actually kind of repurpose a lot of things in the RV. We rewire them and restructure them. This is designed for a portable solar panel to plug in. So we actually build a new plug for the portable panel on the side of the RV using an Anderson connector which runs to another Victron controller, just kind of a much better way to do it. But what that meant was that this SAE port was kind of still up for grabs. Luckily with that SAE port, Mini just needs a good supply of DC power. Now if you think about the port and the connectors with DC, they're all a little different but they're all basically the same thing. So this Mini cord is a power and a ground. And so you can see in this barrel connector, there's an inside section and an outside section. That's really a positive and a negative. Now it's very important when using a connector and here's a couple of other examples here. So here are some MC4 connectors. We've got a power and a ground. And this is the Anderson cord that we actually give our customers. And that ends up with a power and a ground. So it's kind of the same deal. When we're talking about DC, we've always just got a power and a ground. Again, here's like a, a, an adapter I got actually. And this is a power and a ground running to an SAE. Now I would say one thing that I'd be aware of with SAE, especially in RVs, but just in general, there isn't totally a universal standard in this SAE connector of which is power and which is ground. And sometimes it, de it depends on whether we're talking about the source or the load. So if we're talking about the source, we might be talking about that actual port on the outdoors RV. But whether this female is the positive, you know, I kind of know in this because I've got some colorful cable here. So I'm assuming that this is going to be the positive, but on that port, on the RV we don't have that. So I'm always going to suggest anytime you're doing any DC wiring really but specifically with SAE um, because it's a little less obvious is always verify your polarity with a meter. Don't just assume that because the cable's red it's positive or because you've seen the the male be a positive once before or on the device that you're powering, you know, the receiver female is a positive, therefore the male is a positive. Just, I'll go over and over again, but just make sure you verify always um, your polarity, especially when you're about to power your up your expensive Starlink. So this is actually a little uh, polarity of reverser that you can buy, um, depending on if you've got an SAB port that just isn't the way you need it to be, you can use this reverser and this just kind of switches the male, sends the male over to the female and sends the female over to the male here. Just a little bit of advice there. So let's look at the Starlink Mini, which is a Again, just a DC cable. It's going to have a connector and it's going to have a positive and negative like all those other cables I just showed. So if we look at this mini here, I've got my positive in the middle of this jack and I'm going to put my negative on the outside of this jack and you can see I'm hitting 30 volts. Now that tells me because I've got my meter plugged in correctly, I don't have these swapped out, that tells me that I've actually got the correct polarity there. So I need to remember that the mini connector, the inside is the positive and the outside is the negative because whatever adapters and cables I use, I need to make sure that lines up so I don't fry my mini. You can see here, if I had I had the negative in the middle and the positive lead on the outside, I would have got some negative voltage. So that tells me that I had it wrong. So remember, Tom, when you go outside, remember that your positive lead is going to be, or your positive feed, I guess, when you do your adapting and get the power to the mini. You want to make sure that you end up with a positive going into the middle of the connector. Okay, so back to our port out here. We obviously wired this 24 volts. You can see here our, our little sticker here for the 200 watt panels is definitely gone. We're going to put a warning 24 volt sticker right here because this is new. We ran this directly to those 24 volt batteries inside. We made sure our cable length was correct, our cable size, our fusing, all those safe things. But if we look now and I get the meter in this port, and I don't, like I said, there's not really a standard, but typically when it's coming from the battery, this female one is going to be the positive, And that's just because it's a little less exposed and you don't have the risk of the positive touching some ground somewhere. What I did is I found this cable online. And again, most of this stuff is coming from China. So I don't expect any kind of standards, but just cable is what I needed. This is going to be the SAE to the mini, a mini female jack. So if we plug this in right now, it'll only go in one way. And we look right there, but our SAE plugged in. We grab this mini jack and let's check it out. If you're remembering from inside, the we need the middle to be positive. And so if I throw my meter in here, this is actually a little trickier. This takes some precision metering. I'm gonna need help here. So now we've got that sorted. We've verified our polarity. We've got our positive in the middle pin, which is what we need. Here's our Starlink cord. Gonna run that in. This other end is just gonna plug directly into the mini, like so. We'll throw that out. We'll do some web browsing and away we go. We can kick 
this 120 volt adapter goodbye. So this is an awesome solution because we've got the high voltage that we need. We could even put probably a longer mini cord on this if we really needed to get away from the trees. We wouldn't have to worry about that voltage drop. It's also just pretty seamless. There is no clunky power brick and we're not putting a power brick outside that's 120 volts and could be a little dangerous. Keeping it all DC is definitely a lot safer. It's very streamlined and away the customer goes. Well, thanks for watching guys. I know I kind of rambled on a little bit. We got a lot of positive and negative and a whole lot of that kind of stuff going. If you want a clear explanation that's just kind of a bit more succinct, just let me know in the comments. Um, I can kind of just put together how we did it. Maybe we can do it in the description. Again, this is only really applicable to this rig um, because of that ZAMP port on the side and how we wired it, but I can give you an idea of exactly what we were trying to achieve. I'm always going to suggest that you use your meter to do exactly what I did today because just giving generic instructions over the internet isn't always going to work out. Who knows if that SAE cord that came in the mail wasn't flipped. You just never know. It's verifying every little step is very important. But let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you're using the Starlink Mini. I think it's pretty awesome. We're excited to take it out and test it out. I know this customer is 1500 watts of power on the roof of this rig and they're running this super efficient internet solution. It may not be camping like it used to be, but it's pretty awesome if you ask me. Cheers guys. Don't forget to subscribe.